All right, made it, Jamestown. Looks like normally this is a fountain. Headed in to get my ticket. Okay, here we are, Jamestown. And this is a really nice museum. I'm going to attempt to do a walkthrough. Um, it's not busy right here, but it's pretty crowded in there. And there he is, Chief Palatan in his youth. Goes, goes through some of the tribes uh, in his confederation. And they were familiar with uh, colonization. There were many lost colonies uh, before Jamestown stuck. Uh, a famous one in the area, they believe it was off the York River, was a Spanish Jesuit uh, mission. Um, failed. I know uh, offhand the guy who led it uh, purposely didn't bring any soldiers with him uh, because there's a stigma of what the conquistadors had done in South America so he wanted to come in peace <laughs> and uh, it didn't work out too well for him. And uh, I can tell you off the top of my head, um, of course St. Augustine, Florida, that was a uh, settlement that stuck. Of course uh, Roanoke Island, uh, there was another attempted colony. I know there were two up in Maine that didn't stick off the top of my head. I know the French one time attempted to colonize in Florida. Anyway, oh, this is a pretty good representing uh, representation of uh, what things look like when they arrived. One of their dugout canoes. And over here, uh, Africans, uh, first slaves came from Angola, which had been colonized by the Portuguese. Hmm. Yeah, it did metal work over there. Pretty cool looking pipe. Combs, little doll statue. Okay, and here's 15th, 16th century England, London. And at the time, London wasn't a very desirable place. Uh, it was smelly, it was overcrowded, uh, rats, garbage, sewage. a pretty neat setup. I guess you slept on the floor. Here's a little setup, I guess, of your uh, your basic home. And 
it says uh, the the uh, room facing the street was off and often used as a shop to sell goods. Uh, this is a little bit nicer, uh, something uh, the gentry may have had. I don't think commoners had spoons at that time. Salt shaker. Recreation, William Shakespeare, A little back game and set. Oh uh, yeah, Anglicans. I think this just goes through the Reformation. King Henry breaking away from the Catholic Church. Oh, and Queen Elizabeth, uh, that's who Virginia's named after, the Virgin Queen. And, yeah, after her uh, reign of power ended, King James took over. He was a more of a business-minded uh, king, and uh, at that time also, the English had defeated the Spanish. And uh, it freed them up, and uh, it allowed for the, uh, the settlement. They then had the uh, the time and money to uh to dedicate towards it and kind of a Tudor style house, I guess. Hmm. Oh wow, yeah, a lot of colonial sites it says. St. Augustine, Roanoke, Jamestown. Uh, of course, the Spanish. Uh, Portuguese. Uh, settled all that. Sir Walter Raleigh, first attempt at Roanoke. And a lot of controversy about that. Uh, some say they were wiped out by the natives. Others say they just got up and, uh, got up and left. I need to take a trip down there sometime. Huh. That's Sir Walter Raleigh. Okay, I've never seen that picture of him. Cool porcelain bowl. And uh, of course, uh, looking for that, uh, looking for that uh, eastern pass. I'm sorry, western passage. Remember, uh, Jamestown wasn't settled by the English. It was technically was settled by the Virginia Company, uh, an English company that was chartered by King James, uh, joint stock venture. I believe they had uh, up to 700 people contributing, um, hoping to profit from gold and whatever was found. And I know the Virginia Company, which was the London Company, I guess it just changed names. And it lasted until 1625, I believe, after there was a big massacre. Uh, things weren't going so well, so uh, the king didn't uh, renew their charter. And that's when it was, uh, it was uh, run by England.
pretty cool looking crest up there. Established by England, uh, privately owned business called the Virginia Company. I'm not sure if I should take a left or a right. Okay, this way. Uh, so I guess this is kind of walking aboard the uh, one of the ships. Where they slept. Yeah, probably not a good place to be for five months. Mm -hmm. Okay, tobacco, and that's what really uh, what really helped get things going. John Rolfe brought it over uh, somewhere around 1614-ish. He brought over a sweet strain of tobacco that was really popular in Europe, and that's when things turned around. Um, that's when the uh, colony started making money. Uh, also, John Roth had, had married uh, Pocahontas, and, and that kind of created a, a little era of peace with, with the uh, natives. So, kind of funny because King James actually despised tobacco. Alright, I guess I'm going to kind of wander. There's uh, just trying to avoid people. And here's Opie Kane Cano, Chief Palatan's brother. Palatan, Palatan died 1618. His brother took over. And his brother wasn't that nice of a guy. He formed a big, uh, a big attack um, 1622. And it wiped out almost a third of the, uh, of the settlers. Uh, because in 1619, the uh, th things that kind of settled in, they started bringing women over, uh, started spreading out in into the uh, native territory. And there was a second attack, 1644. Uh, yeah, over 400 colonists uh, died in that one. And then I think there was fighting for about two years, and then the uh, natives signed, signed some sort of, sort of treaty, treaty that they were... Uh, uh, under the king's control. Yeah, and this is the first, it wasn't really an Anglo type, it was pretty much a, a massacre, a sneak attack. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it killed women, children. Um, yeah, it was pretty, and uh, the settlers in Jamestown, Jamestown actually had gotten word they had fled. Um, but uh, several of the small, smaller new uh, settlements that popped up, uh, Bermuda 100, uh, Henricus. Um, yeah, they, they didn't uh, fare so well. And Sir Thomas Dale, there was uh, another uh, important moment. He came over, I want to say, uh, 1611. And uh, he really tightened things up, uh, kind of created kind of a, a martial law, uh, had a real strict set of rules. And he also helped uh, spread, spread the uh, colonies out because uh, he was in power when John Roth came over, brought tobacco. And he helped start up, like I say, Bermuda 100, uh, Henricus, and he's also uh, important for helping uh, the settlers own their own land because he came up with a system where settlers could own X amount of acres if they contributed an X amount of tobacco per month, I believe it was. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll see Jamestown right there, and then... All the uh, little settlements began to pop pop up. Yeah, so 
a lot of people starting to uh, come in. Pretty cool looking cannon. The gunner. And sorry, right, I think there's a little kind of clearing over here. Okay, these are the first Africans brought over. And what happened was they are actually stolen. Um, there was a, the Portuguese were importing slaves from Angola to the, kind of the Mexico area. And they were pirated by some English who took them up to Cape, Cape Henry, uh, Point Comfort. And I believe four of them were sold or left. I think there's some sort of movie that's uh, gonna gonna start. Lady Angela who was one of those first four slaves that were left at Point Comfort. And the first slaves were kind of, some were kind of indentured servants. I don't know if they were allowed freedom after they're indentured, but uh, I quickly just turned to straight slavery. 16, 1661, uh, slavery was legalized. In 1619 that was a big year in the colony um, by then all, all the dirty work had been done and things were uh, settled and com uh, comfortable so they started to bring over women to uh, encourage families and uh, oh no, yeah, of course first Africans were brought over and uh, also the first representative government the House of Burgesses was formed and this is a cool fireplace backing a pretty neat jug Uh, right. Looks like a movie going on in there too. Um, watch those later. Oh, and Bacon's Rebellion, another big turning point. Uh, kind of a short story with this. Um, it, originally, uh, labor was performed by indentured servants. Uh, they would work five maybe to seven years they would pay off their indenture uh, they were allotted land uh, all the good land was quickly taken up so they started moving west uh, as they moved west started getting into conflicts with the natives and uh, governor berkeley didn't support the colonists because he had some trade relations going on with, with the indians and uh so nathaniel bacon stepped up and he formed a little militia of men uh, and they actually stormed Jamestown, burned it down, uh, but ended up uh, the rebellion was uh, it was quickly squashed. And it's kind of funny. There's Governor Berkeley. Um, the Daniel Bacon through marriage was actually like his second cousin or something. But anyway, oh, and that was a turning point because after that they just realized the whole indentured servant process was just kind of a mess and too much of a headache. So that's when they switched to African slaves. All right, King Charles. And King William. Uh, this thing, sixteen seventy, is a pretty good job for uh, for that time. And 
been surveying a popular ocu occupation at, at the time. And this would be uh, representing a representation of a slave dwelling. Personal storage spaces are provided by subfloor pits called root cellars. Look in the reconstructed root cellars to see if some of the objects archaeologists typically find. And uh, early on, the uh, settlers and, and uh, slaves kind of lived uh, near each other. Kind of a stored cellar, root cellar. I guess to keep things cool. <laughs> and I guess they slept on the floor. would be a planter's house um, dwelling that belonged to Thomas Atkinson uh, kind of a middle class uh, middling uh, middling status Settled. 17th century Virginia. Unlike the nearby quarter of similar size that could house many unrelated uh, baby cradle, I guess. is only for the planter's family. All the household items you see are typical of the possessions. Typical bed warmer, road bed. We know this from archaeology and from historical documents called probate inventories. These are lists. And it looks like this is a mock-up of uh, some of the aristocracy, some of the upper-class gentry, King James. Indian cabin. Uh, based on archaeological discoveries at the Camden site in Caroline County. Cool. Well, those look comfy except for the wood, uh, <laughs> the wood bottom. And Koka Soski, Koski, Queen of the Paw Monkey Indians. All right, I'm gonna see if I can uh, find some of the stuff I missed. And she was the queen of an Angolan kingdom. The starving time, and another big moment, uh, the winter of 09 into 010. And uh, only 90 out of the 250 uh, colonists survived. There was a big drought. Okay, here is a map of the voyage in the standard uh, route people would take. They would leave England, they would shoot down to the Canary Islands, I guess kind of take a little pit stop, a, a little break. They would shoot over to the Caribbean, stop at one of the islands. It looks like they stopped several times. And then they went up to 
uh, Point Comfort, uh, which is like I say, Hampton. Uh, stayed there for a little while and tried to decide where to settle. And uh, yeah, chose Dayton in Jamestown. Yeah, and they chose Jamestown several different reasons. Uh, for one, it had deep water anchorage. I mean, they could anchor right by the shore. Um, also, it was a good defensive location. It protruded out into the James. Uh, they could see uh, all sides. Um, they had instructions not to disturb the Indians. Uh, didn't want to disrupt trade. And plus, there was kind of a stigma about colonization because of what the uh, Spanish had done in, in South America. So, and John Smith and uh, had the reputation very flamboyant, full of himself, character, a very re rebellious guy. He was actually arrested on the ship ride over. Uh, he was jailed on the ship for mutiny. <laughs> and it was kind of funny when they landed, they read some sort of charter that he was to be one of the leaders, but uh, had a very storied uh, career as an explorer. And he, they think he was born in, in 1580. They're not sure of his exact birthday, but he was uh, baptized January of 1580. Uh, anyway, so yeah, he started out his career as a mercenary soldier. Um, he spent some time in the Mediterranean uh, where he did some pirating. Um, ended up uh, fighting the Ottomans. Uh, they think it had, I believe it had to do with the Crusades. But at one point he did, ended up in Hungary where he was captured and enslaved. And yeah, some of these stories get embellished, but supposedly he killed his master in some sort of altercation. But he did travel from Eastern Europe all the way across uh, Europe, uh, all the way down to Spain, crossed over to Morocco, and took a ship back to England. So after that, he had the reputation as a hardened soldier. So he was uh, added to the uh, <clears throat> he was added to the uh, to the adventure uh, to Jamestown. And, uh, yeah, served as the, he was only in Jamestown for, for about two years. And uh, I'll skip through his uh, time in Jamestown, but uh, went back to, uh, he was injured uh, in, in some sort of a gunpowder explosion, 1609, October, went back to England. And then, and I want to say 1614, he came back. Uh, well, when he was in Jamestown, he charted, uh, he went up and down the uh, Chesapeake Bay, charted, mapped out the whole area. Uh, went back to England when he came back. I want to say 1614. He mapped out the New England area. Uh, the map he drew out, he called New England, and that's where the term New England came from. But uh, yeah, very storied career. And a uh, little setup here for Pocahontas. And this is right before she died. This was when she was over in England, 16. And they say that she really didn't look anything like this. And it's kind of strange. A lot of those older paintings that people always have that cock eye, that chameleon eye. I don't know if that's just artists somehow accidentally do that or <laughs> anyway. But uh, yeah, Chief Powhatan's daughter. Um, unlike the movie she she didn't fall in love with john smith and yeah of course story goes that she jumped on his body when he was about to be killed by chief palatan's tribe odds are that didn't really happen but uh she ended up marrying john Rolfe, and that was a big turning point uh, in jamestown it, it brought peace for several years between uh, palatan and, and the settlers and her original name was matoka and i don't know how it turned into pocahontas because when she was Christianized, her name turned changed to Rebecca. So, but um, yeah. So after she married John Roth, then she ended up going o over to uh, to England, and uh, she died over there. I believe it was consumption got her, but she was only 21 years old. So uh, they did have a son. The son stayed over in England. John Roth came back uh, to the colonies.
All right, so that was the museum tour. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. And I'm headed down to the uh, settlement now. Then after that, on onto the ships. So yeah, I uh, do, uh, my other colleagues will do everything from what the governor might have had on his dinner table. Uh, we have the actual cook books, and uh, Lord Delaware actually bought his own cook with him. Investors, the men are coming here working for the company, um, defending the English flag, blunting Spanish Catholicism, blunting Spanish expansion in the New World, and wanting to sort of catch up. I think the original Palisades were actually a little bit higher. Good in here. Yeah. Uh, 
Looks like this guy's about to do something. I'm gonna follow the crowd. And here are one of the three corners of the fort. Powder doesn't just magically go off when you pull the trigger. You have to set fire to it. Now, pretty much. Do Protect your paints. Protect fire. Make ready your paints. If you see the kettle hanging over the fire, mm -hmm. we are making this stuff. Did you see the musket demonstration? This is what he's using to fire the musket. This is the slow match. We're making our own. We're treating the rope. This is what it looks like before it gets treated. So we have to make our own slow match. Their slow match would have been manufactured, treated in England, shipped over, already treated and made and ready to use. We're not making anything here. So we're going to burn that. Looks like this would be the church. All right, so that was James Ford, and I'm headed down to three ships. And Susan Constance, this is the flagship, captained by Christopher Newport. It's the one John Smith was on.
54 passengers on 17 crew, so 70 some people. And then you'll have the Godspeed over there and the Discovery, this Discovery being the smallest. quarters that doesn't look too safe on a rocking ship <laughs> Five months. Okay. All right, so we're on the gun deck. down there I guess uh, rudder back there So that was the Susan Constant. And yeah, they pretty much dropped, uh, she and the Godspeed dropped the passengers off, set sail back for England. The Discovery say, uh, stayed. So John Smith could have explored the Chesapeake Bay. And yeah, these are much smaller. All right, yeah, this goes through what I was saying earlier. 
left London, pit stop, Canary Islands. Uh, made lots of stops uh, just so they could bathe and get fresh water, fresh air, stretch their legs. Then they shot up to Point Pleasant, uh, Hampton, uh, Cape Henry. And uh, that's when they uh, decided on uh, decided on Jamestown. So, yeah, December until May. So, yeah, basically, um, yeah, five months. Ferry taking you across to Surrey County. If you want to visit Chip Oaks Plantation, right across down there to the left. All right, uh, I'm gonna uh, gonna take some pictures, and I guess I'm gonna head out of here. So, and yeah, that's gonna be it for Jamestown Settlement, not to be confused with historic Jamestown. Uh, yeah, there's two places to visit down here. I'll be uh, checking that one out at, at a different point. And uh, anyway, yeah, I'm out of here. So I'll see you.